Thanks for joining me today. I would like to show you how to build these type of planters. First things first, going through my lumber pile and choose a 1x12 yellow cedar board. I bought this lumber at my local sawmill. The owner is clearing out his lumber yard by the end of each year and sells this so-called gray stock for half the price or less. Gray stock is lumber stored outside, exposed to the weather and eventually changes to the gray color. Yellow cedar is one of the world's most durable woods. Strength, durability, density, and natural rot resistance creates a great combination against the elements. And it is also used and has been extensively for boat building. It was probably first used by the Pacific Northwest Coast natives for their historic totem poles and Great War canoes. Moving on, after cutting the board to smaller pieces, I prep the planer so the wood slides through smoothly. You don't have to, but I decided to plane both sides and at the end, all boards have the same thickness and are going to fit nicely together. And another upside is, I can easier pick the nicer side for the outside. Then I'm going to cut the boards parallel. And at the same time, to a 10 degree angle that provides the planter with a flat top and bottom edge. I also mark the inside and the top of the planter. Remember. I want to have the nice side facing out. That comes in handy when I start cutting the compound miter to all four panels. I don't want to mess this up because I'm ready to cut my miters. Setting the blade angle to 44.1 degree and the miter angle to 9.9 .9 degree. How do I know? I'm telling you right now. The mighty internet is helping out again. This page is called blocklayer.com. You will find a drop down menu to set your thickness. I'm just going to leave it at three quarter of an inch. The next setting, I change to four sides. That's how many sides my planter is going to have. The side angle is going to be 80 degree. Remember, I cut the top and bottom edge to 10 degree. 80 degree plus 10 degree equals 90. Makes sense, right? Click calculate and here we have the results, the miter and the plate angle. They also provide a preview of the planter. When I scroll down and click on the 3D button, that should also make it a little easier to build the fancy single table legs you see on YouTube lately. Okay, now that I figured that out, I finally start cutting my pieces. Unfortunately, the saw blade didn't like what I was doing, so I had to switch the saw blade. I think it was about time anyways. Okay, that's enough of that. Moving on, gluing the planter sides together. Like I would glue a box together with a 45 degree miter cut on the end. I believe most of you guys have done it. I'm no different. Using masking tape and make sure the glue is good for exterior use. That's where I'm planning on using the planters. Because of the planter size, I laid down a strip of plywood so that I can easily flip it over after clamping a second piece in place to apply the glue. The glue for these planters can now dry or cure. Sorry, I don't know what the right term is. In the meantime, I show you how to cut the uh, particular miter with a circular saw. On this one, I am going to stick with the same angles. I set the circular saw to 44.1 degree. And as you probably can imagine, it's more of a guessing game with these little machines than perfection. More precise is, or should be, the 9.9 .9 degree pencil mark on my plywood. Well, we will see soon enough.
I wasn't happy with this. Let's try this again with a piece of duckless fur. This time I changed the side angle to 66 degree. Therefore my mitre angle changed to 22.1 and 40.2 degree on the circular saw. Let's see how that turns out. So as you can see, it is not impossible after a couple of test pieces on getting to know your equipment a little better. Potentially using a fence or guide for your circular saw. That should work all right. I'd say not too shabby. Changing angles again. This time it's a 75 degree side angle. The miter angle is therefore 14.5 and blade angle on the table saw is 43.1. In order to use the table saw for these cuts, I have to whip together a couple small cross cut slats. I'm assuming again, most have done this before. A quick summary. Cut a couple of strips to fit your miter gauge slots on your table saw with no or very little wiggle room to the sides and a little gap to the bottom of the slot. Grab off cut plywood if available the A glue and activator. I had a couple pieces laying around from a previous job. Painted white and one side. Ideal for stupid people like me. Because we are going to need a sled for the left side and a sled for the right side. And the color helps me to remember. Maybe. I could have just written on it, I guess. I lined the plywood up exactly center saw blade in order not to make them much smaller as they already are. As it turns out, I didn't need to do that. Why? You will see it soon. Anyway, I grab a couple of strips of wood, line them up to my angle finder at 14.5 degree and screw them in place. Because I am working on a table saw, I pre-cut my wood to a manageable size and ripping it parallel, ignoring the top and bottom angle. Set the table saw to 43.1 degree and start cutting the miter for the planter sides. There is a left and a right side and that's where the second cross cut slat comes in. I am using both slats on the left side of the table saw, I didn't think of that earlier. So I had to remove one screw to not mess up my saw blade. It is already somewhat dull. In order to cut all the pieces to the same length, I made a pencil mark after I cut my first planter side. If I would have used a nice piece of wood with none or smaller knots, that would have been a great usable planter. Now I'm just going to abandon it. Okay, back to my yellow cedar planters. I am all excited, pulling off the tape, ready for the final touch up and then that. What happened here? Unbelievable. Me being impatient is the problem. I wanted to build the new planters with no nails, a modern design, and now it's all out the window. I don't have the time to deal with this. And after cleaning up the glue, new glue is applied and the nailer comes out. At the same time, another idea popped in my head I have seen on YouTube before. I am quickly going to build a router chick to add splines to the miter joint of the planters. Link to the router jig video in description and at the end of this video. There is one catch to this particular router jig I will explain later. First, 
we are watching this guy on the screen adding his massive dovetail splines out of Douglas fur. Thanks for hanging in there. Here's the issue with a 90 degree spline router jig. It doesn't work for these type of planters or weird shaped boxes. In my case, I just hold one side of the jig tight to the planter, mark the other side and cut it to fit. From now on, that jig is only usable for a 75 degree angle planter. And that's one reason I don't build jigs out of expensive wood, oil and wax it. Make it all pretty just to modify and change it later. Carrying on with my yellow cedar planters, cutting a frame for the top and hope to make that planter look better. Not sure if it's really needed, but it's done now. It's been glued and nailed on. I also add a couple of strips of wood to the bottom to keep the planter off the ground. Too much water can actually run out through the bottom of the planter. Jump for the edges and do some final sanding. Then I add a bit of linseed oil, not that it is needed, but I wanted to show off the ductless fur splines. And the oil helps me to do just that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now go and build some planters. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>